In 2017, Senate investigators on the Committee of Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs wanted to understand how drugs like the powerful opiate fentanyl were entering the United States. The synthetic compound and its derivatives have been the source of a sharp rise in overdoses in the U.S. And investigators knew the drug originated from online dealers in China. But how was it being smuggled into our country? To find out, they did what anyone would do. They Googled it and discovered dozens of online retailers peddling the drug. Posing as potential U.S.-based buyers, investigators emailed questions to fentanyl retailers about products and stock. The retailers offered a surprising level of customer service, describing the quality of their product, providing pricing and discounts, and even offering suggestions for fentanyl analogs when a particular product was out of stock. Almost all of them guaranteed delivery to the United States. One even boasted a 99% successful delivery rate. But what was most alarming was who the fentanyl dealers overwhelmingly preferred as their parcel delivery service. The United States Post Office. For the United States Post Office, as it has since it was founded 173 years ago, still provides the one means of communication which reaches into every corner of the land, which has helped to make America great. This is how international drug dealers came to favor the U.S. Postal Service. 2,100 employees must examine some 350,000 pieces of mail each day. If you were going to send something illegal into the United States, you might be inclined to first try a private parcel service like UPS or FedEx. After all, neither is run by the United States government. However, these private companies are required by law to collect information electronically, including mailing addresses, weight, and package contents on all the packages to send to U.S. Customs. This makes it easier for the U.S. government to monitor who might be trying to smuggle something illegal into the United States. But packages sent through USPS often don't arrive with the same information, according to the Postal Service. To understand why this is, you need to understand how mail travels around the globe. The United States is one of 192 members of the Universal Postal Union, a UN-chartered agency that facilitates the flow of global post. Basically, member nations agree to fulfill mail delivery that is sent from other countries. If you send a letter from France to Korea, for example, the French Postal Service will ship the letter to Korea until it reaches the Korean Postal Service, and every nation it passes through is responsible for handling the mail while it's within its borders. It's a good faith agreement that has been around for 144 years to ensure the flow of correspondence and goods around the globe. But these agreements were made during a time when we didn't have nearly as much international mail as we have today. With the rise of e-commerce, the number of international mail arriving in the U.S. has soared, with packages making up around half of all mail delivered to the U.S. from abroad. A lot of those packages are coming from China. In 2010, the U.S. Postal Service, in an effort to increase revenue from international postage, introduced the e-packet service, which offered discounted rates for posts from China. Suddenly, it became much easier and cheaper than ever before to send mail from China to the United States. The USPS was inundated with packages from China and elsewhere, and the international drug dealers were presented with a huge opportunity. A postage stamp is the best insurance in the world. <laughs> right, Bill? Right. According to the Postal Service, 275 million packages entered the United States through their service centers in 2016. But a lot of this mail doesn't arrive with any electronic data, meaning there is no clear indication of who sent it or what's in it. That's because Universal Postal Union members aren't required to collect and share this data like private companies. And only 23 countries send it with their post bound for the US. In 2017, only 36% of packages sent contained any electronic data. This means a lot of packages can fall through the cracks. At a postal service center in New York City, customs officials were only able to identify 10 suspicious packages from China a day using electronic data, according to Senate investigators. This leaves U.S. Customs to search for many of them the old-fashioned way, by hand. Imagine looking for a needle in a haystack when you're only allowed to examine one straw at a time. A customs official was quoted by Senate investigators as saying, the current system barely scratches the surface of finding drugs flowing through the U.S. mail. Stakeholders across the parcel delivery industry have sounded the alarm about how our mail system is being exploited. When I board a flight back to the U.S., I don't look around 
the passengers looking for suspected terrorists. I think about the bags and bags of foreign post packages that are loaded in the belly of the aircraft. No one has any idea what's in those packages, none whatsoever. But the U.S. has been unsuccessful in compelling other countries to supply the shipping data, and some legislators have asked if we should refuse to deliver this post from countries unless they also provide this data with their mail. Why can't we tell them that they can't utilize our post office unless they have an electronic tracking number on it that we can track and share with CBP to cut down on this baloney. A Customs and Border Protection spokesperson said in a statement that it has made significant investments and improvements in our drug detection and interdiction technology and targeting capabilities. But solutions are slow coming, and the mail will likely still be an appealing route for international drug smugglers, all for the cost of a postage stamp. Other countries are working on their own timetables. We can't afford to have them work on their own timetables because our people are dying. And I guess the question I would ask this morning is how many more Americans have to die before our government gets its act together?